You gotta believe. Hello, everybody out there in Ryder Nation. Winter has arrived in Saskatchewan. Yeah, got a dusting of snow last night. I don't know if you can see it out here. Uh, winter has arrived. We had a short fall, but it was a warm one. Got the snow tires on just in time. Uh, cold too. It's more like end of November weather. Minus six out here. A little bit too early for this kind of crop, that's for sure. Well, it wasn't too early to get rid of the coach. Figured it wouldn't take him long. Tell him to lock and put his, turn his keys in. Didn't really fire him. He didn't have any more contract left anyway. Same as O'Day, he didn't have a contract, but they signed him for three years. Three year deal. I don't know about that one. I said in my video before, I didn't think it was a good idea to let him go, but I didn't say a three year contract would be a good deal. It's a good deal for him. If he doesn't perform, they'll end up having to buy him out. Cost us in the coaching salary which is a real pet peeve for me. That's one reason I don't like Reynolds. He must have voted for that when he goes to the general meetings to have a coaching salary cap. I think it's the stupidest thing ever. It's made for teams that don't have any money and get outbid on talented coaches, which I think is dead wrong. If your team is doing good and got a good balance sheet and can afford to hire a talented coach, well then, you're all the more power to you. But it's not like a lot of the stupid rules the CFL has, that's one that really gets my goat. No idea why they'd want to do that. It just restricts the talent. You can get up here and the talent and how, and if you got a good coach, can improve your team vastly. Reynolds tried, I mean, uh, not Reynolds. O'Day, he tried, I'm serious, like, at training camp, I was there, they had a pile of offensive linemen in there and quite a few D linemen, you know. But none of them seemed to turn out, and the ones that did got hurt. Uh, Blake got hurt right off the bat. Uh, Hawkins. There was a lot of guys, same in the D line. That Cox, which was a decent guy, got hurt. Plus, he's drafted pretty good in the, the Canadian leagues. Got us some decent Canadian talent. And that to me is very, very important. I just don't know how many contacts O'Day has down south. It's nice to have a general manager that got a lot of ears down south and a lot of guys that can scout for you. Just give them a call and say, is there anybody available down there that's not got a contract or is sitting there doing nothing? That's the key to a general manager. I knew Reynolds probably wouldn't go because you got a good balance sheet. Well, as far as I know, we do. Yeah. Yeah, he's not gonna go, he's an accountant, and that's what they need. And it'd be nice to have a football guy, but he more gotta please the fans. Wish a lot of guys aren't happy with him, especially the season ticket holders don't get any special d deals or bonuses much for being a season ticket holder and it pisses them off. Don't blame them. But now, I'm glad they just fired the coach. At least you're not starting right from basics. It's like going to boot camp if you start with nobody. 
you know, you got a fresh, then you end up might end up hiring a general manager and coach. They'll want both jobs. You know, like give them, the only good thing about giving O'Day a three-year deal is they know he has to stick around, and if they get hired by the, him, he probably stick with him for the long run. You know, if you only give him one year, that'd be forget it. It'd be the same situation as last year with the guys with one year. Nobody wants to come. For three years, some stability there. And if he don't produce next year, there'll be so much pressure on him to get rid of him. And what do you do then? The stupid salary cap. Hard to dump somebody. Uh, you know, there's, there are different guys available. I suppose the main guy is that Scott Milanovic. You know, He's been around. I hate bringing in guys that have been around and been head coaches, just recycle them. But look what he did to Hamilton. You know, they were playing crappy. And he went in there. And I think he's the offensive coordinator in there now. And he just turned it around. Says a lot that right there. And he'd be a good pick. But there's a few out there like uh, Jordan uh, Maximic out there in BC. He's more of a, of a offensive guy, but that might help Jaco big time. Like I'm not sure how long Harris is intending to play and if he does play, how long he'll be standing upright. I only one other and maybe Corey Mace. You know, he's a young guy. And, he was up for a couple of them jobs, but I can't really say. You have to actually meet the guy and and see how he, what his plans are. That's up to O'Day now. You know, O'Day never really got a chance to hire a coach. He was sort of forced into taking Dickinson, promoting from within after Jones dumped us and uh, left us with guys with two-year contracts. You know, we were sunk. He had just signed him into a two-year deal and then he bailed out. That was the only thing that really pissed me off about Jones leaving. Don't blame him for leaving for the NFL. Be a fool not to leave. Give it a chance down there. Get known a bit down there. You gotta get your foot in the door. Didn't turn out for him, but he ended up back in the CFL. In Edmonton, they were just starting to turn things around at the end there. I'll be watching out for them next season. He'll know which holes he needs to fill, that's for sure. And he seems to be able to get the guys to come up here. Yeah, O'Day, he didn't, he had, he had to go with Dickinson or somebody. And, and that's what we were stuck with. I just, uh, he should have done something beginning of this year you know maybe dumped him and swallowed that salary and found, tried somebody else because it just turned out to be a clone season just like last year it's just about identical well we got a lot of free agents too and that's one thing O'Day's already dealt with these guys and has a pretty good feeling of what their intentions are, which is very helpful. In today's CFL, you're constantly signing contracts because long-term contracts are just very few. There are very few of them around. They just don't seem to give any long deals. That's another reason why players don't like playing up here. Anyway, that's about all I got to say about the general manager. And the coach being fired. Continue my walk here. Pretty cold day. Happy the Huskies won. That was a big one. Really a tough game. One of the better games I've seen them both teams play. It was pretty well unreal. You know, there wasn't hardly a first down by either team in the first half. 
was absolute crazy. It was hard nosed football. And then I thought we were sunk. One time, Rams, I mean, not Rams, Regina went down and just ran the ball right down our throats, big runs, and went in for a touchdown. I went ahead. I go, holy moly. Seemed to have tired us out and taken over. It was a replay of a rider game. We were ahead. Well, they come back and one old Sarge started barking on the side. Doesn't take for bad play and not going for it hard. He, he yells and screams on that sideline. Something Dickinson lacked. Right, anyway, that's about all for this video. Again, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning into this old guy and subscribing. And enjoy all your comments that come on the line there. I answer everyone I can. I'm not that busy. And uh, it's good to read and there's a lot of good views. I don't know. Who's your choice out there for the next coach of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. I read that. Yeah. I read a bit that Burris might come here. Forget that. I don't think his wife, even the first time he was here, didn't want to be here. Uh, maybe things have changed. But I don't know if I could stand Henry Henry from the sideline. Don't think that's an option. Anyway, till next time. Go riders, go.